Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm going to be drawing on my clothes. So one of my favorite YouTubers to watch is Mariah Elizabeth. She makes amazing videos on many different topics like uh, customizing squishies, painting on things, sometimes uh, she also bakes things. If you've never watched her videos before, I highly recommend them because they're really good, uh, they're really funny, and they always make me laugh. In some of her recent videos, she's been painting on her clothes with fabric paint. I thought this looked like so much fun and I really wanted to try it for myself. So when Arteza contacted me asking if I wanted to try out some of their art supplies, I knew exactly what I wanted to try. So the first thing they sent me is this set of 30 fabric markers. These markers are dual tipped. They have an ultra fine tip and a fine tip. The markers are suitable for work on jeans, t-shirts, tennis shoes, backpacks, sweaters, all kinds of things. The second thing I got is this 24 set of fabric paint. You get a wide variety of colors, including two metallic colors that are sparkly. According to Arteza, they are permanent and machine washable. These fade resistant blendable paints are washer and dryer safe. Apply smoothly and dries quickly. Won't peel, crack, or harden your soft fabrics. Can be used on denim, cotton, linen, canvas, and wood. And they are AP certified non-toxic. So the things I'll be customizing in this video are one of these tote bags that I got in a three pack from my local Walmart and a white t-shirt that I got from the Walmart men's area. The bags are ready to go and do not need to be pre-washed, uh, but they do need to be ironed. <laughs> They're really wrinkly. So the design on the bag is going to be kind of like my test run. I wanted to do something really simple to help me get used to the art supplies. And when I think of something simple, I think of Kirby. I drew my design on the computer and printed it out. Next, I was going to use my light pad to transfer the drawing to the bag. Kind of like what I do when transferring my sketch to a new piece of paper. I was going to use a pencil or something on the fabric to trace my design and then go over it with the marker. But it turns out that the fabric is so thin I can see my design right through it. So yay, <laughs> it made less work for me. I taped my design and the bag to the light pad so they don't move around. And then used the black fabric marker to trace my design to the bag. My design is of Kirby from the Kirby Nintendo games. He is holding a cupcake and under him it says always hungry. Uh, Kirby eats many things. Uh, so I thought I'd include something that involved eating. I've been trying to watch what I eat and be healthy and stuff, but I just want to eat cupcakes and junk food. <laughs> I think that's where inspiration for this design came from. Working with the marker on this bag was easier than I thought it was going to be. It worked really well. I love the fine tip, it allows me to get pretty thin lines. They're not super duper thin, uh, but they're a lot thinner than what I thought I'd be able to get. I outlined Kirby's blush with the pink marker. I wanted to be able to see where the blush was located for when I'm painting, uh, but I didn't want to use the black to outline it, so I used the pink. After finishing the line art, I start using the paint. I mixed the fluorescent pink with white to get a nice light pink and started to fill in Kirby. I made sure to make a lot of the light pink because since it is a custom color that I'm mixing, I did not want to run out while I was painting him since it'd be hard to get the exact same shade of pink a second time if I run out. I was trying to be careful to not go over my line art with the paint. Painting may have been easier if I put the paint on the bag and then did the line art. However, this seems like it'd be trickier for transferring my design to the bag. Uh, so that's why I decided to do the line art first. For the blush, I took the pink I made for Kirby and then add a little bit of the dark red to it to make it a darker blush color. Also, I did add a little bit of water to the paints to thin them out just a little bit. They are pretty thick and kind of like to hold their shape when I squeeze them out of the bottle. Uh, so to make them spread a little bit more, I added just a few drops of water. This helps the paint not be so thick and also makes it a little bit easier to apply to the fabric. Also, this paint has really good coverage. For the most part, I only needed to do one coat of paint on everything. So I was happy about that. I didn't have to double paint things. 
For Kirby's eyes, I decided to use a blue fabric marker since it's a pretty small area. I used the same blue on the cupcake liner to help bring more blue into the design. So here's my first attempt at using the fabric markers and paint. I think it went pretty well. After working on this bag, I was really excited to work on the shirt. Oh, also, since I got the bags in a three pack, I gave one of the bags to my sister and I let her make her own design of the paints. <laughs> she painted Elliot Ember in like a chibi form on her bag. I think it turned out really cute. She used the silver metallic paint for his hair and it's so sparkly and shiny. It's super cool. Anyways, now we're going on to the shirt. And like I mentioned earlier, the shirt I got was from the men's area, not the craft area. The craft area did have shirts, but none of them were my size. New shirts can sometimes have products or chemicals in them that will make the paint not stick as well. Uh, so they need to be pre-washed. After washing the shirt, it was really wrinkly. So I decided to iron it so that it'd be easier for me to draw on. Uh, well, let me introduce you to the fabric destroyer. <laughs> For some reason, my iron loves to randomly leave black marks on things. It did it to my bag. Thankfully, it mostly came off and I made that side with the stain the back side. I thought the iron was clean and wouldn't do it again. But nope, it made a huge mark in the middle of my white shirt. After a lot of scrubbing, rewashing, and drying, I mostly got the mark out, but you can still kind of see where it is, which is kind of annoying. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Fabric Destroyer. But thankfully, it will mostly be covered by the paint. I repeated the same process I did for my Kirby design. I drew it on the computer and then printed it out and taped it to my light pad. And once again, the fabric was so thin, I could see my design right through it. So yay. <laughs> I was worried the shirt would be too thick and I wouldn't be able to see the design. This time, my design is of Hinata from the manga and anime Haikyuu. If you've been a part of my channel for a while, you may know that Haikyuu is like my favorite anime. It's a sports anime about volleyball. At first I was going to draw a picture of Link on my shirt because I really like Link as well. <laughs> but then I realized it's pretty easy to find Zelda merchandise at stores and stuff. However, it is not easy to find Haikyuu merchandise. So I'm making it myself. When I drew this design, I gave it really thick line art because the extra fine tip is small, but I knew I wouldn't be able to draw super small details and make the line art super thin. I'm glad I planned for a thick line art because drawing on the shirt was very different than drawing on the bag. The bag wasn't very soft and it was more canvas-like, so it was easy for me to get a nice clean line that was also kind of thin. However, the shirt is much softer and has a lot of little fibers that like to soak up the marker. It was a lot harder to get a clean, thin line on this shirt. I decided to embrace the kind of messy look. I actually feel like it looks kind of cool since I'm drawing a character from a shonen manga. The kind of messy feel kind of fits the vibe. At first for this design, I was going to draw Hinata's entire face, but I thought this might make the design too small, so I made it way bigger and then put the box around the design. Like I mentioned, getting small details was a little tricky, so I'm happy I made the design as big as I could. Oh, now I'm working on the feathers. This part was so much fun. To get the feathering effect <laughs> from the markers, I flicked the marker super duper fast across the shirt. This helps the feathers look softer and more feathery. Also, in case you're confused by the feathers, uh, the volleyball team that Hinata is on, they're kind of represented by crows. So I added the crow feathers in the background. I'm really happy with how they turned out. I think it's my favorite part of the shirt. <laughs> After completing the line art, I start using the fabric paint. I'm using fluorescent orange. I wasn't sure if I wanted to use this color since it like glows. It is super duper bright. However, I didn't want to mix a custom color because I was covering so much area with the same color. I actually end up really liking this bright orange. It's a fun pop of color and it really contrasts with all the black. Once again, I'm trying to be very careful and stay within my line art. Thankfully, this color is pretty translucent. It seems like all of the fluorescent colors are kind of more translucent. So even when I go over the line art a little, you can't really tell too much unless I put a ton of paint over the line art. And even if I do go over my lines a little bit, I can touch it up later with the marker again.
Karasuno's colors are black and orange, so I wanted to stay with using only those colors. Hinata has brown eyes, but I decided to make them orange. That way I can keep everything black and orange. Plus his eyes are kind of a light brown, so they're kind of close to orange, I guess. <laughs> Lastly, I paint his collar. It was a little tricky adding the striped detail to it. I had so much fun working with these supplies and thank you so much to Arteza for sending them to me to try out. Because of Arteza being so generous and sending me art supplies, I'm able to have new art experiences and have fun playing around with art. Also, Arteza was super awesome and gave me this code for all of you to use. If you use it, you can get 10% off your purchase. For Hinata's shirt, I used the black paint. I was really glad I only needed to do one coat. I was thinking since I'm painting a white shirt that I maybe have to do two coats. Uh, but like I mentioned, these paints have really good coverage. And ta-da! Here's my design. Now we just need to set the designs into the bag and the shirt and give them a test wash to see if they survive. To set the paint and marker into the fabric, you need to iron the back side of the fabric after letting the design dry for 6 hours. This will help the design on the fabric be more permanent. After ironing them, I throw them into the wash and hope that they survive. This is the detergent I used. All the other ones we had have fabric softener in them and you cannot use fabric softener. After washing, I put them in the dryer. The instructions for the paint didn't say anything about the dryer, but the markers say they will last longer if you hang dry instead of machine dry. I didn't know that when I put them in the dryer. Thankfully, they all survived. Yay! When I pulled them out, they looked exactly the same as they did when I put them in, and I was really happy. Now let's take a look at the final results. Uh, yeah, I am definitely not a model. <laughs> My sister kept insisting I needed to model the shirt for all of you, uh, so I did. But I had so much fun customizing the bag and the shirt. If this is something you would like to see me do again, please let me know in the comments. I had so much fun doing this, so I would definitely do this again if you all want me to. Anyways, that is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!